Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. Again, we want to thank everyone for their support over on Patreon. All the videos go up on Patreon, as well as some exclusives on a, I'd say, a two or three time a week uh, basis. Meanwhile, we have the UN Security Council passing Gaza ceasefire resolution. The U.S. didn't veto it. Neither did Russia. It's non-binding. And again, will Israel pay any attention? Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, but explain why is this important, though? Well, I, there's numerous prophecies out there that speak of when, when they call a peace of some sort, that that's when uh, the war really breaks out. And that's when the Third World War really breaks out. Um, Alois Ermiler, and if I said that wrong, then, you know, for the grammar Nazis out there, please well, forgive us. He likes being called Ali. Yeah, we just call him Ali. Um, but anyway, uh, he was one. There, it's also biblical, you know, and, and there's others that have seen this as well. It's, it's fascinating because... You know, some people, if they've only read one tradition, might think that there's only one tradition that gives prophecies. But no, prophecies come from all around the world. They come from all different traditions. It's because, you know, there's multiple things in play. Some prophecies are seeds uh, to bring about manifestation. And others are literal timeline possibilities that people get a glimpse of. And this, you know, this could be, uh, hopefully it will be a break uh, in the horrible disaster that has happened to everybody in Gaza. You know, again, there's calls for more humanitarian aid. And there's been so many times, so many instances where we've seen humanitarian aid dropped. And then all of a sudden, a barrage of firing and shelling and people can't get to it. Uh, you know, we, history repeats itself. What can you say? History really repeats itself. So why does this matter? It's the first resolution demanding a ceasefire to pass at the council after four previous failures. The U.S. abstained rather than using its veto. All other members voted in favor. Most recent failure was on Friday when China and Russia vetoed a U.S. proposal. Dispute was over the U.S. insistence on leaking the ceasefire call to a hostage deal and condemnation of Hamas. So we, you know, we'll see how this manifests. We are uh, on March 25th, 2024. Things are really ramping up, and that's an understatement. What's all this in the Atlantic? Well, these are ships carrying parts of what's going to be. Uh, a humanitarian aid floating platform for, that's going to be constructed off the coast of Israel. And, uh, you know, this is, we'll see how that goes. Again, we put out our prayers and our best positive intentions and, fr and frequency for all those that are suffering over there. Uh, let the awakening quicken because pe it, this really has to quicken because we are so close to the time where they will trigger uh, WW3 full scale unless we can again get those in very high places to say no. As you see, there's a lot out there. There is a lot out there. A lot of it again is, is Coast Guard way far away at home. Look at it. CSG, that's Coast Guard. There's Coast Guard, Coast Guard, Coast Guard, Coast Guard. <laughs> that's Coast Guard. Yeah, you know, there's a lot away from home. And also, uh, they are beginning the pre preparations for calling back into regular service people that have retired. And I would not be surprised at all if there is a, a conscription that gets put in place. France, meanwhile, has raised its terror alert level to its highest level after suspected ISIS attack in Moscow, warning that the group has attempted two attacks in France just this year. Italy has raised security measures as well as has Serbia. Serbia is interesting because, again, um, if we look at Ali's prophecy it feels to us that it's likely that there's some sort of 
assassination, perhaps even of the Serbian president, uh, that might be the actual trigger. There, there still may be two assassinations uh, that maybe have like five or six weeks to play out. We'll have to see how all this goes. Make note that they're again saying that ISIS, ISIL, and this is exactly how they usurp something that's good in the goddess Isis, uh, who was the most revered goddess at one time across the entire planet. And from our understanding of who Isis is, uh, Isis is actually a member of the, well, at that point in time, was a member of the Galactic Federation that helped to reseed life on Earth after Earth which previously was known as Tiamat, was destroyed by the system. So, Zircon hypersonic missiles rained down on intelligence headquarters in Kiev. There's been uh, a definite uh, intensifying of the attacks that are going on between Ukraine and Russia. Uh, there were, again, many missile strikes inside of Russia. Now the, the Russian strikes have gotten bigger and bigger. Entire buildings completely gone. I mean, pretty much you know, down into just rubble. Uh, more than likely, uh, people were in there. It's just, you know, this is n not getting any better at this point in time. The Russians reported that advanced U.S. Patriot missile batteries had been completely destroyed. Now, these again... These are a new technology, so they say, um, that are impossible to take down. Uh, now, <laughs> I don't know. Lasers move pretty darn fast, so we'll see. But again, this is all part of the script that's playing out, and, and they want to change who is uh, leading the dance, so to speak. So this is an update on the different ships in the black uh, sea fleet of Russia that have supposedly, again, supposedly been destroyed. And as you can see, that's a substantial amount of the Black Sea fleet that has been destroyed. Meanwhile, Russian, Russia is turning out massive weapons, uh, munitions uh, on uh, unprecedented scales. And by the way, so is Iran and so is North Korea for this war. And then China, we haven't seen China yet, but it won't be long. It will not be long before China comes in uh, to play as well. So this is all intensifying. And so the investigations uh, underway into what happened with that mass shooting again, that was really um, interesting. And the symbolism of the band was interesting. Uh, more to go into there in later videos as we already did deep dive a little, but there's just so much more to go into. So the Crocus terrorists started talking. Well, that's what happens when you put electricity in certain places it's not intended to go. Yeah, I mean, these guys, oof, they look very worse for the wear, but hey, if, if you're willing to kill somebody for any uh, for anything, in, in my mind, you know, I, I, I think you're, you're subhuman especially when you're doing it for for money <clears throat> and even amounts of money that are not that big it, it just is it shows the demonic nature of this age so they say they were trained in turkey for two months and again uh 40 suspected isis members in istanbul turkey uh they have a uh, quote-unquote, arrested and detained, and they'll probably be getting uh, the testicle clamps as well and the shock therapy. Yikes. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're, they're going to get their answers uh, one way or another, but th the question is, who really are they? If you've really been paying attention, then you understand that most of these people are just simply hired mercenaries. As y There's been reports of ISIS members you know, dropping patches, dropping flags, jumping over to another cause. Whoever pays the most is the bottom line. A lot of these literally could be ex-military from anywhere, anywhere. And here you have Putin says that radical Islamists carried out the attack 
but now we want to know who ordered it. He claims this was part of Kiev regime's Ukrainian regime attack on Russia. Given that Western intelligence has been the financiers of global Islamic terrorism for decades, suspect number one would be the CIA. Yes, the CIA, etc. Al CIA, they, they, they don't say that for no reason. I know. I mean, this is really horrible. So we have these group of bad guys that are obviously bad guys and they've captured them and they've you know put their name out there and 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 their faces and they show what they're doing to them um you know but really that's such a small part of the equation i mean we definitely need these ones to be off the streets but then there's other beings who will do things to humans for a certain amount of money and they're up in these positions where you might call call corporate you know you you call them very sophisticated positions very high up on the ladder and they're passing laws and they know that the laws that they pass are making people very 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 sick and in some cases people die so we we just we need to like close in the circle i think we need everyone to be rounded up and you know this is something uh, it's it's better than nothing but we have so far to go you know, I have seen uh, where people have delved into can taxpayers be held responsible when governments use that uh, money to create to commit crimes against humanity. And it looks like that is a possibility. That's crazy. Um, but again, we have to ask ourselves, you know, when we start to know these things, what do you do? And, you know, we certainly don't want to support all the death and destruction and that's where the money goes it goes to death and destruction so what are we to do well what do you guys think we are to do please do share in your comments by the way associated press published footage of a ukrainian unit commander wearing an isis patch in the donetsk re region now again you might say well you know maybe it's doctored how do you know it's an isis patch maybe it's doctored I mean, because we've also seen uh, things like the crosses topsy turvy that Nostradamus used to describe the the Waf, you know, the SS. I'll just say that uh, patches of, of a NAZI nature. It, it does look like it. It just does. But it, the reality is, again, uh, the white hats and the black hats are one and the same. And if we're going to be waiting on white hats, don't worry. Trust in the military. I mean, I, when people say that, trust in the military? Uh, I don't trust any military on the planet. And and that might uh, offend some people. But, hey, I just got to be honest with what I feel. I don't trust any military. Look at what our military has, has done to people in Vietnam and in Iraq and in Syria and in many other countries that people don't even have a clue that we've been in there and doing abominable things. But the Russians have done it too. The Russians wiped out tons of their own, millions of their own people. You know, Stalin, he, he killed millions, tens of millions. He, he when you're talking about Ukraine, uh, brought about a genocide w through famine. What, what can you say that's good about any of the militaries on this planet? I don't think anything. There might be individuals that are good-hearted souls that when they get in there, um, they, they realize they made a mistake. Uh, it's not what we thought we were going to be doing. We're, we're not defending the homeland. We're 5,000 miles away you know, doing drug deals. This, this is the reality of the system that we have, and that's just saying it like it is. Mm. Bird flu is confirmed in cows at three Texas Panhandle dairies and another in Kansas. Texas Department of Agriculture says there will be no supply shortages. Well, gosh, I feel better now that we have some experts on it. Yeah, and as we've mentioned many times, you try to get yourself some raw milk. Uh, you know, you're you're much better off trying to get illegal substances that are going to really kill you. Yeah. Um, it's that's easier to get than get raw milk, which actually might heal your gut. How many people have leaky gut syndrome? How many people have all sorts of uh, just chronic illnesses? It, it's because they won't let us 
utilize the things that will help us the most. And now they want us afraid of intermittent fasting. Well, I know. I mean, if you do have leaky gut or if you're somebody who can't drink milk out of the store, um, a lot of people have actually been cured by getting the raw cow's milk, drinking the raw cow's milk. Now, I'm partial to raw cow's milk just because I want the cream and everything, but I heard that raw goat's milk is pretty darn good too. It's easier to get a hold of. But the, the problem is, is cow's milk, I mean, it, it's so fulfilling it it has all of the nutrients that we need in its raw form but when they heat it up that kills all the little enzymes that need to do the need to do the running the coming and the going and the passing on of information from one cell to the next they kill all that so you try to drink it out of the store you get a stomach ache you're a lactose intolerant no you're just kind of intolerant to the bs that they do to our food yeah, like the antibiotics, the steroids, the artificial hormones. It, it's it's not the cows. It's all those things. And then they do studies that say red meat causes cancer. But that's just red meat that you go over and get in Walmart. And <clears throat> red meat that you get in, you know, the big stores that has been given the antibiotics, that has been given the steroids, which obviously steroids are going to increase the risk of cancer. And also has been given its dose of, uh, you know, let's just say the R-A-N-M, if you could unjumble that. Mm-hmm. Well, there's there's just so many things that they do to our food that it's going to make us sicker. And then, you know, people blame it on that. And it's not that. It's, it's the, the form. It's what they've done to the food by the time it gets to you. Even certain organic things that say organic are are now sprayed with things that are going to really mess with your gut and really do that leaky gut thing. Okay, so this is something Mr. MBB had up before, and this is an update. There's been um, multiple sightings of a face next to the moon. And we did just briefly touch on this. As you can see here, many people are saying Project Blue Beam. But see, part of the problem is so many people that jump onto the blue beam thing, which blue beam is a reality. We, you know, I think it is a reality in a sense. The moon is, it has always been uh, basically a blank projector screen that they're putting, uh, they're putting all the craters and everything in it. Um, not just myself, but I, I've discovered that other people uh, have seen it go totally blank in, in the past and even did videos. There's a, uh, I forget who did this video. I think I want to say like 11 years ago of the moon going blank. And um, it's out there making its rounds. But I did see that in, I want to say it was was in North Carolina. So maybe uh, spring, spring, winter uh, of uh, 2019. It went totally blank, totally blank. And then the craters and everything came back on. Yeah, and then talking to the guides and getting information. There is a moon there, but it's a um, it's a projection is what we see. And yes, they can move it and change positions. I mean, it's it's not the creator of the universe that brought the moon there. As again, there are many different people from the Etruscans who live north of Rome in in ancient times in Italy. Uh, that spoke of a time before the moon. African tribes did as well. Many other indigenous people as well. It's in records written down by Greek historians talking about a time before the moon was put into place. There's more documentation on that than anything on, on the Bible, really, uh, of, of note. So when you look at I mean, it predates anything that we have of a biblical nature. What do you make of this? This is really, really curious. Now, of course, the the people that are really in charge have technology that can do this in a heartbeat. But then there's also uh, other benevolent and indifferent, to a degree, uh, entities out there that are watching. Yeah, somebody wants to let us know uh, you are being watched. You're, you are not alone. And, you know, we're going to do another video because I want to just mostly cover uh, the news on this one and the updates. But we'll we'll go into some more information we got about the return of the Anunnaki and other stuff that's going to be coming on down the line. 
and we'll share uh, in an upcoming video, maybe in the next one. Uh, apparently, soldiers in Vietnam who used the first generation of infrared goggles were seeing some sort of entities all around them. Due to panic, the equipment was withdrawn and never used again. The equipment that apparently caused problems for the soldiers in Vietnam was called starlight scopes. First generation night vision goggles produced a reddish image, not green. This was due to the phosphor coating used on the screens. Some prototypes had various compounds in them. And, of course, these are just stories passed on by many soldiers, some who used the goggles outside of war zone and in the ocean didn't see any entities. But some of those in the war zone, especially in the helicopters, have recurring nightmares after witnessing the entities. Apparently, there are more present in conflict zones, and according to some whistleblowers, even today they're drawn to nuclear energy. They thought they were demons or jinns. I think if true, they were seeing a glimpse into some interdimensional forces present on the battlefield. And, you know, that's a great post. Um, thank you, open-minded approach for doing it. Um, yeah, absolutely. And why would they be on the battlefield? Because they're having a banquet. This is what they feed off of. And yes, these beings are real. They're very, very real. And and that that is their food, literally. And yeah, you, you, you could legitimately call them demons and jinn. Well, a lot of people who go through an awakening, they start to see the different layers of the dimensions and it can get overwhelming and it can get very, it can get very frightening going through an awakening. So, I mean, an awakening is something you always want to do while you're healing. Um, you know, I never, ever, ever advise for that to be done if you're someone who's been through a lot of trauma and and needing a lot of different medicines um this is something that can really overwhelm you and can be seen it's something that i went through understanding that there are several several different dimensions with different entities and it, it's just very busy out there so if you could imagine these kind of like hardened uh military people putting these on and seeing that i mean could you imagine what that would do to them i mean they're seeing it with their two eyes it's 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 nothing that should be taken lightly you know and of course they take these down very quickly they get rid of these goggles um because they know that something happened and i i happen to have a camera that when uh, we go outside and we talk to the ghosts and the spirits and the elementals that camera takes pictures of orbs and we've done videos on that too um, and I, I, I can't find that camera anymore. <laughs> so, and there was other cameras that would do it, but it was way back when. So I think we were going through a time when uh, technology was on the rise and, you know, they made some oopsies and people realized, oh my gosh, we really are surrounded by things and it just didn't go over too well. No. And, you know, again, um, you're going to get your people that will not be able to go past the indoctrination that they've had because it just won't compute and, and they won't be able to process it, especially if it's, you know, indoctrination uh, by use of the belt or, you know, other fear based tactics uh, that kids have gone through throughout the years. There is this awakening going on right now. And it's 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 it can be comical at times. Here you have Kamala Harris brutally trolled by protesters in puerto rico they're singing for her right let's see if we could get a little bit of this she's getting all into it she's like wow what are they saying and they're saying you're a putz <laughs> basically they say we want to know kamala what did you come here for we want to know what do you think of the colony as in you know again the u.s using puerto rico as a colony and and the colonization process that the europeans have done for so long to all those other peoples out there and and now it's going to hit home because now the U.S. is going to be colonized, and most certainly, I feel also the U.K. and Canada, Australia, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it's it's just 
they understand how they initiate that karmic wheel and then they just set it in motion and they utilize the hatred that develops in people that are being oppressed to go on and later on become oppressors. This is exactly, you know, how the system works. It's pretty horrible. It is. But see, it is starting to crumble in so many ways. Uh oh, FBI raid on Sean Puff. Puffy P. Diddy Combs, the Diddler's Homes, all of them. Uh, there's like four different houses that they raided on, uh, you know, yeah. I, can you guys read that? X-E-S trafficking. Yeah, this, a lot of darkness is getting exposed right now. Absolutely, a lot of darkness is getting exposed tread cautiously and hopefully hopefully but cautiously let's let's put it that way because this is a system that loves sacrifice it loves sacrifices of all kinds and these people that yes they have sold their soul to the system they might unexpectedly find themselves becoming the sacrifice they have all these bases covered. We talked about them playing chess many steps ahead. So we have to you know, think accordingly. Church attendance has declined in most U.S. religious groups. Three in 10 U.S. adults attend re religious services regularly. Three in 10 never attend. And so the most religious ones right now, as far as going to church, are the Mormons at 67%. We have a lot of Mormon friends, or at least friends that grew up in the Mormon church and then later got on out. What we see is people are pulling away from organized religion because there's a huge difference between organized religion and spirituality. And, you know, I found it interesting in the Eastern Bible, which includes the Tao Te Ching, yet I still don't. I still don't really resonate with most of it, honestly. It just doesn't resonate for me um, as much as some other things do. Um, I personally, like when reading the Tao Te Ching, I, I find little um, to not resonate with, uh, but that's just me. And then there are some of, of the yoga the yoga sutras and the shiva sutras which are just fascinating explorations in consciousness you can find in the bhagavad gita uh the, i'm sorry the bhagavad purana the gita will will talk to you about reincarnation and transmigration of the soul which the souls do and <clears throat> you know it, it's interesting too because i was looking at one thread where people were talking about somebody put the question out there do animals have souls I'll ask you guys, do animals have souls? Do you believe animals have souls? Please do share your opinion. Uh, Cindy and I, we say absolutely. I mean, they have, they have personality. They have emotions. Each one of them is unique and different. You could have twins uh, of an animal kind that will have very, very distinct personalities, just like twins uh, here in, in the human race. And yeah, sure, they might have certain physical tendencies and characteristics that are similar, but they're not the same soul. But animals, in my mind, absolutely, in my heart, absolutely, they have souls. I, I don't think there's any doubt of that. No, I couldn't imagine them without, you know, it's just something, it's, that's something that I've never thought about. It's just like I, I always know, you know, and as far as people n not going to church and that's on the decline I mean, I love the idea of people getting together. I love the idea of people sharing um, common goodness, people helping. You know, churches do a lot. They do they do food pantries. They help people who are maybe get stuck in town. They help the homeless. Um, they might advertise some other things to help uh, get little businesses started and up and going. So I do love a lot of the aspects of church community. I mean, I love it all. Except where they put you in a box and they tell you, you have to believe this one thing. You know, that's where I get sad. And I, I think a lot of people are waking up to that. And it's just so natural for them to say, hey, this doesn't feel right. I don't think I can talk to anyone in this church anymore. So I'm just going to have to go out on my own. But um, I, I think there's becoming more and more people 
who are doing that and they think they're alone but maybe you're not maybe your neighbor just kind of walked away for the same reason and you're both lonely and you don't even know because we kind of we've stopped talking to one another you know because of technology and various other reasons and plagues upon the land so we don't really connect face to face but I see a time coming up where we're going to be able to do that again and whatever that looks like that part of it is a blessing is to get other people together helping one another uplifting each other um you know helping each other through really hard times really tough times it's, it's, to me there's nothing more beautiful really absolutely to live past 100 eat less just that simple manja a little less italian experts ideas on aging uh, the article also touches on uh, the Mediterranean diet, which so many people probably are already familiar with. Um, but yeah, eating less is key. And, and again, I've talked about this so many times on the health ones. The one thing you can always do that will always give you a longer lifespan is taking less calories. And so it's, it's interesting that, again, caloric restriction is one of the things that can help us live longer. Now, the times that we're heading into, a lot of us might be forced to do a little caloric restriction. It, it depends on what you take in. It's what you take in. And we got to think beyond uh, the, the macros. Think past the macronutrients. Think about the micronutrients. Think about the cleanliness and the, the true organic nature of what you're taking in. And try to eat whole foods. That means, you know, things that only have one ingredient. It's an apple. It's a steak. It's a you know, piece of fish if you're eating meat. And, you know, if you're not, that gets more challenging uh, because, you know, your, your Boca burgers and your all these other stuff, um, all these vegetarian options, they're loaded with all sorts of different things. So you have to look really, really carefully. Um, there are some smaller companies out there that m make some things that are, might be acceptable. But again, know your blood type too, because, because, you know, it, a lot of things, there's a lot of variables and their blood type is one of the first things I would look at too. And then just, you know, trial and error with yourself. I think personally for Cindy and I, I I'd say we're flexitarians. We just kind of go along with what the body feels like it needs now and we listen very carefully mm -hmm. oh that is so important to listen to your body i mean if you're if you're not making gains then it's time to stop and see what are you doing wrong but it's not an easy thing to do i was just talking with a family member today and we were just talking about giving up sugar and how hard that truly truly is is just to set that sweet thing down and and don't look back and it, it's not so easy you know and it just makes me feel about think about the controllers and how wise they are because you start taking in the sugar your cells are full of sugar and it doesn't leave any room for any nutrients so you're just you know the nutrients is passing by the cells it's not even making it in the body and then pretty soon you know everything starts getting sick and Maybe you're not even taking in that much sugar, but I can tell you, even just a little bit, it can really wreak havoc on the body. Absolutely. So Prahlad Jani was a monk that said he didn't eat for 76 years. Of course, scientists said that was impossible. So scientists twice hooked him up uh, and watched him uh, during a period of time, I think it was... 14 days the first time and I think longer the second time we've made several videos on him and they watched him he didn't eat or drink and they'll tell you well yeah you you can last more than a month possibly without eating but drinking it, nothing that's impossible scientists will sell will say and yes it is selling us the you know, they're selling us this but he, he, he did it. They monitored him and they had absolutely no uh, explanation. So he, d he died May 26, 2020 at the age of 91. He claimed to have lived eight decades without food and water. And he said that midnight on the eighth day of Navratri, three goddesses, Kali, Lakshmi, and Sarasvati, appeared to him and bade him to follow. And he consented. 
what about my food, he asked. And they each placed a finger on my lips and said, you need not to be concerned with food ever again. He was seven at that time, and he stopped eating and drinking and said he never ate again. So this is, in, in when we're talking about the golden age, um, our bodies are changed to the point where we don't have to eat or drink. We, we are of a, a different type of body energetically. And it, it's fascinating, too, and there's been videos done on it. Um, gosh, what's the name of that? this kid's mind unveiled? Um, they do a great job going down uh, the Tartaria and all these things. Like, why do you have mansions with one bathroom? Hundred rooms, one bathroom, and the obvious, you know, answer is people pooped less because they ate less, because you know we we don't we don't have the same nutritional needs. We we can literally pull the prana from the environment around us, and people can do that today. And he is you know evidence of that. Yogis and some monks can do it. And here's Li Ching Yun, and I do have his 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 biography. Uh, you know, he, some say he lived 256 years, maybe even longer. What's fascinating, it is documented that the Chinese government congratulated him on his 100th birthday and then, like, uh, numerous other times. His 200th birthday, they say he died at the age of 256. What did he eat? Very little, um, typically, very little. Sporadically, he walked a ton. He, he recommended that you sleep like a dog. In other words, you just take a nap when you need to. You, you don't have to sleep for eight hours consecutively. And he's holding a piece of ginseng because really he subsisted on roots and berries mostly. Um, when he was in human company, he would uh, eat sometimes two or three bowls of rice uh, as a treat. But for the most part, different herbs and you know roots and uh, berries. And, and that was the vast majority um, some say he was seven feet tall, but I've also um, s see that refuted, like he was a giant and something special of that uh, sort. But what's interesting is, um, you know, there's a lot of documentation of him, a lot of documentation of him and interviews of him, too. So as you see here, 1827, he, he got documentation again. Congratulations from the government at birthday 150 and then another one at 200 you know and of course you know snopes will be like oh that was just you know that's that's not true you know it's been debunked they want to debunk anything that's not part of the system because they're paid by the system it's it's part of the bigger picture that people are thankfully awakening to i think the number one thing that helps us live a long long time is just playing happiness have fun Play with your neighbors. These guys are so cute. He is so, so cute. I love watching the puppies and kittens play. Absolutely. Look forward to your comments, guys. Thanks for your support. Much love, source bless, and namaste. Namaste.